Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the Minute Channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing a Persona 5 uh, Royal, I'm sorry, not Royal Strikers discussion. Now, this is going to be more like the ending and a little character spoiler thing. So if you haven't uh, play, finished the game, I definitely encourage you not to watch this video until you finish that. And the other second thing that I do want to mention is I did have a four hour podcast where I talk about every single thought that I had on this game. So if you want to watch the full length version of this uh, TLDR, you can just definitely check that out there's gonna be a link in the description for that but let's go ahead and jump right into this video so persona 5 strikers uh had an interesting development cycle with this it was made alongside persona 5 royal and it just came out a few days ago here in the west uh, well, well maybe a, a few weeks ago now uh so I had originally played this game in Japanese and then I played it again in Chinese and then I played it again in English so I had a lot of time to kind of dwell on my thoughts and feelings on the game and the characters and everything like that uh, so overall I just want to first say I loved a lot of these aspects of these games and I thought some of these games also had some stuff that were in the weaker side that's why I ranked, uh, rated the game a 9 out of 10 as, again as I mentioned there uh, in my review I did feel like some of the stuff were a retreading of the previous game but at the same time a lot of the stuff was really good and really interesting so what did i like what didn't i like let's go ahead and jump into that aspect so one of the biggest thing is i really love that this game really focuses on character interaction and character development for previous characters such as haru and makoto all of them needed more time to kind of develop in the original game and this game really kicks it off by giving them more character interaction and therefore more development for all of them uh the only one that i will say maybe didn't have a lot of character development was ryuji but we can it's debatable if you even want to say that but i feel like every single character including the main protagonist really kind of jumps forward with the story and gets a little bit more agency and more development overall i feel like this is a great choice I feel like having the characters just kind of grow more is good, especially because a lot of them really kind of had a story and kind of stopped in the mid uh, uh, in the middle of the game because of plot elements, and they don't really get to move forward. For example, Haru didn't really have a lot of time in the original game, and in this game, Haru not only is she quirky and has her own aspects and interesting ad aspects of like personality wise but also her story just really moves forward and she gets a lot more time screen time and actually it's just like conversation and everything like that she just can get a lot of that so fantastic point there i really want to mention that quite a bit now uh, uh, speaking of the retreading i feel like a lot of the uh, aspects of the dungeons themselves or even the setup of the story kind of retards a lot of the elements from the previous games uh evil bad guy does big thing they kind of just get dragged into it and they just have to solve this mystery all together and overall it's just kind of feel like even the names of the dungeons like the palace of dust is this instead of lost is still instead now is the um the gel of of lost which is kind of the same thing you know like you, you can go for a different reference of a different met metaphor there and it will probably be a different point but it doesn't they don't really attempt to even hide that uh for example the last villain or the evil villain which is emma this um Alexa Siri kind of element thing, um, AI <laughs> bad guy kind of thing. It's just I, I thought it was okay. I didn't think she was particularly interesting or like super good or anything like that. But I did feel like her character, uh, I guess, motivations. She kind of said just kind of like it was almost the same as Zelda out as far as like you know this is a desires of the people or whatever. And in in this game it's like oh, well these people need me because I'm this. Uh, sort of person that gives them what they need or whatever. It's literally almost like a retreading of that. In fact, the boss fight, uh, the boss enemy at the end, looks almost the same as in uh, as in the previous game in, in Persona 5. It just looks almost exactly the same. Not only that, but I don't know if this is a casualty of kind of like things or anything. But I thought like having a villain with kind of like almost. A day, uh, a villain that uh, conflicts with the beliefs of the Phantom Thieves, and you kind of have like this. Well, is this is he right or is he not? Kind of thing. Or at the same time, having a sad story it almost sounds to me like every single thing that you would expect on somebody like Maruki. Which at the same time, I do want to mention Akira, Konoe, and Maruki are di very different characters. But uh, what I just mentioned basically applies to both of these characters. You know, they both conflict with the Phantom Thieves because of the belief system. It's not a right or 
wrong kind of thing, more of like a morally gray area, where do you sit on that gray area kind of thing, which is almost again the same thing for these two characters. Again, they also have reasonings and backgrounds that kind of justify the means of what they're saying, uh, and they both also kind of looking out for the good of the people, you know, uh, Maruki has uh, his motivations and his things that he believes on, and then uh, Akira also had kind of has like, okay, well, this is what I believe is right, although at the end of the day, Maruki was not being, um, I guess, uh, controlled by a AI such as Akira who was kind of like being manipulated by the AI the entire time at the end of the game so there are like some differences and similarities here but there is definitely a lot of similarities in these two games now let's go ahead and talk about uh, my favorite characters because I feel like their the new characters were really well written and definitely had a lot more development than somebody like Kasumi on Persona 5 Royal although I really like her character I really do want to mention her character really didn't have a lot of development on the previous game which kind of saddens me because I do I was a fan and I really like Kasumi quite a bit however if you look at um Sophie, for example, who is one of the new characters, she does get a lot of character development, although you could argue that her story is almost at a retread of uh, Aegis from Persona 3 or even Morgana in Persona 5. They do have a lot of the same story beats elements or Teddy from Persona 3, I'm sorry, Persona 4. They all have that kind of like, well, they're not necessarily human and they're kind of learning to be human and they kind of, uh, they have this existence issue, um, kind of like, who am I, where do I come from, you know, that kind of stuff those kind of that that also it's almost at this point overdone which all the different characters kind of having almost a, a retreading of that same storyline understandably so all three of these characters are definitely very different but it, to me every time that i kept think looking into uh, her storyline i was like it, it almost feels like every other character mascot from every other game that i have so far uh, from persona 3 all the way to persona 5 they do have kind of like that similar elements of storytelling so i do want to mention that however Kas uh, kasumi i'm sorry sophie or sophie has uh, her own personality her own quirky elements and I did actually enjoy her character quite a bit she was really funny when she needed to be funny and she was really serious and kind of like almost like a hard on team when it needed to be and I actually appreciated that because um Persona writers have some have an issue writing characters that are either too funny and cannot almost not being able to be taken seriously and like somebody like uh, Morgana, for example, or Ryuji, were kind of like they're almost like the punching bags where they kind of play off of each other and like they're the joke of the team most of the time. On the other hand, you have somebody like um, Sophie who really is, is, I feel like, a really well written character overall. Like when she needs to be funny, she's funny. When she needs to be serious and have the serious stuff happen, really kind of has that moment now i do want to say that again all the characters were really well written in this game and they do kind of get that development including ryuji who gets serious at some point and even his cursing line and everything is just perfect delivery at the perfect time and it does add more to his character i mean i feel like they did this pretty well to every character so it, that is a really good choice over there uh, my other character that i really enjoyed quite a bit and actually i even made a whole video about this is senkichi senkichi in his relationship with his daughter akane really kind of played off of each other really well he actually uh, oddly enough really served as a good way to kind of develop makoto as well i thought makoto was really lackluster on persona 5 or even rojo but uh, strikers really did a pretty good job as far as like developing this character and at the same time giving off the story for Senkichi and Akane who has obviously the father daughter relationship or you know father that goes to work and he's busy with the police and at the same time you have Akane who is kind of like the daughter of a cop and she has like her own thing and everything like that the storyline actually surprised me in kind of the way that it turned out I knew a, a lot of the elements because of uh, spoilers of course and and obviously like even looking flipping through the art book and everything but at the same time the way that it's played off is really interesting I really love the, the dynamic between the two uh, and also I love the dynamic between Senkichi and the Phantom Thief before he even became a Phantom Thief himself there is a lot of cool elements as far as like seeing them how they kind of came off to be and everything like that opposed to uh, like the relationship with each other is like this cop that is kind of helping uh, the thieves kind of uh, it almost reminded me of the relationship between like Batman and 
the commissioner in in uh, Batman kind of like they have like this trusted alliance with, with each other they know the what they can or cannot do and they have like this confident almost element to it and I really love that this game although it didn't have the confident elements it does build up I confident with uh, Zenkichi. They, they have this relationship that kind of develops over time, all to the point where they actually go to his house and they meet his daughter and all kind of stuff like that, even before again he became a phantom thief. And it just kind of spirals out of control in, in an interesting direction. But I really like the way they actually introduce his character. His character is interesting. Voice actor did a pretty good job of kind of having this mature phantom thief kind of join into a team. Um, I like the way that they utilize both Sophie and Zenkichi as well because if you're a new player and you never play a Persona game, there's a, a good way to introduce new people into the series, and that is having a new character learning the ropes as kind of like the Phantom Thief. And having both Senkichi and Sophie as kind of the eyes for new players was an interesting concept. I think that it worked really well. It really paid off because both of these characters are funny and interesting, and they have a lot of kind of like, well, I don't know, what is this? What is that? What is the metaverse? What is all this stuff that you kind of like, if you were a new player, Player, this game definitely has a good way to kind of introduce all those mechanics to you kind of to learn the, the things and everything I really appreciated that quite a bit overall I really like this game uh, obviously if you want to talk about the flaws I did again feel like the returning was a little bit on the too overused maybe having more different beats on the story would have been interesting um, I actually didn't like the fact that all the the villains had like redeemable qualities kind of thing like they were all like evil but at the same time they were actually good people that, that some things made them bad um, uh, that just kind of doesn't didn't work out for me super well and the last thing is just i really really felt like this game had an interesting pacing uh, overall felt like the first few hours were really slow but then once the game just kicks on going it just goes and it goes pretty well uh i don't know for some for me sometimes i felt like the game was either too short or too long but at the same time kind of like no i think it was the perfect length if it was too short it would have been like 20 hours and people would have been complained because it's too short and then at the same time if it's too long people are like oh man this game kind of i feel like the more you play this game you do feel some aspects of the gameplay kind of needed more time on the oven to cook uh i did compare this game primarily to games like demo may cry or even near but i do feel like those games kind of excel more on that hack and slash aspect than this game this game does have a little good tools and gameplay aspects that i really enjoyed but overall it just felt like this game maybe could have done a little bit better in some of those aspects as well whether it's the gameplay itself a lot of the elements when it comes to what they do and everything um i do feel like some of the combos and everything could have been more better explained the master arts could have added more layers to it i feel like four layers for the master arts wasn't enough maybe more of them with adding more com uh, combinations of attacks and maybe a button that allowed people to kind of uh deflect or even shield or something would have been an interesting aspect of it but overall that's pretty much my thoughts and impressions there guys this is my final uh, spoiler talk here uh I, again I, I don't expect people to go through four hours of footage to kind of hear all my thoughts and everything that's why i wanted to make more make more of this focused and consent video here let me know in the comments below what do you think about these spoilers what was the bigger uh, twist or anything like that i didn't even really get a chance to talk about the other character or anything like that but uh i feel like this is good enough for me to kind of talk all of my bigger thoughts and everything thank you so much for watching this if you're new please consider liking and subscribing and i'll see you guys next time